الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Abil Abba Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has mentioned the intention of a believer is better than his action. Alhamdulillah, I make near that whatever I say, inshaAllah azza wa jal, will be solely for the pleasure of Allah azza wa jal. And O oh, viewers of Mati channel, you make intention that you also, whatever you listen, that your intention will be to gain knowledge and act upon it for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. And also make intention that whatever good you hear, that you will make a note of, and you will make amal on that, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. And also, more importantly, that you will also do neki ki dawat, that means invite people to, to go towards goodness, and also discuss some of the important points that affects you as well, inshaAllah Azza wa Jal. Our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, that on the day of Qiyamah, the closest to me will be the one that recites the greatest number of the Ruda Park. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Dear viewers of Madhini channel, this series to veil or not to veil, alhamdulillah, we are continuing. In the last episode of this series, we mentioned very briefly about guarding your modesty and lowering your gaze. And we quoted this verse from Surah Nur, Surah 24, verse 30. Say to the believing men that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty. That will make it great, give them greater purity and Allah Azza wa Jal knows what you do. Whilst great emphasis is placed on hijab for women, it should be known that Islam also teaches the male folk to observe his own role in impl implementing haya, modesty. That means he is also taught ways of modesty, I'm talking about the male, including how to dress modestly. Now, how to dress modestly according to sunnah, dress according to sunnah. Alhamdulillah. You find in Dawud Islamic Mahol that we are encouraged to dress according to sunnah in Madri Libas. And this is also shows modesty. That means we are following the dressing that is liked by our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa And alhamdulillah in Dawud Islami to emphasize modesty, Amir al sunnat Damad Barakatum al-Aliya emphasizes on parde me parda. Parde me parda means using the brown veil when you're sitting to make sure that your satr is also covered, that there's no way that you can expose yourself. Alhamdulillah, Dawud Islami practices this. And the emphasis today will be the role of male. To keep your gaze downwards, Alhamdulillah, what is the significance? And it's mentioned, the significance is that by controlling our gaze, we control our desire. That means what our nafs ammara desires. And that means you, we, we, once you practice make, keeping your gaze downwards, it gives you control of your nafs ammara. And also, in a way, if we practice this hayai, that we keep our gaze down, we also give a message to a woman being given the proper dignity and status and also regard with purity and not being used as an object of lust. This is a great honor for women, especially who, women who are inclined towards spirituality. Also, it's interested, very interesting to note 
that in Surah Noor, when Allah Azza wa Jal talks about casting your gaze downwards, Allah Azza wa Jal firstly addresses men with regards purity and haya before he addresses women on the same subject. And the way he says to the believing men that they should also keep the gaze downwards. So what it implies that men must take lead in practicing and adopt, adopting modesty. In addition to dressing modestly, which is obviously according dressing according to sunnah, and also keeping the gaze lowered, that means to protect themselves, the men, from the desires with regards to women. This command is, as we mentioned, in the Holy Quran, where Allah Azza says, translation from Kanzul Iman, say to the believing men that they should lower the gaze and guard the modesty. Right? It should be noted that the greatest creation of Allah Azza our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was extremely modest. And this was also the character of Hadith Sayyidina Usman, Usman radiallahu anhu. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madhi channel, we heard that Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu anhu was referred as Kamil al-Hayai wal-Iman. That means he was a model of modesty. And as you can see, after our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one that had the greatest modesty, Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu anhu, this shows the role of male. So therefore, haya, as many people misunderstand, is not for women. Because the model of haya, as referred to by Allah Hazrat radiallahu anhu, kamil al-hayai wal-iman, is Hazrat Usman Ghani radiallahu anhu. So therefore, Hazrat Usman Ghani, as he was known as Zunnu Rain, he was blessed with marrying the blessed two of the blessed daughters of her beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After one passed away, her beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam offered him the other. And this is a hadith where our beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam had mentioned that my companions are like the stars in the sky. If you follow any one of them, you'll be rightly guided. And we have to now think of this because. Western culture tells us that to have modesty, especially for men, it is unmanly. That we must show our manliness. We must not show modesty and shyness. But now who do we listen to? To the kuffars or what our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa has said about modesty, about keeping your gaze downwards, about practicing shamefulness, all these things, shyness. And this is something that views of Madhi channel. We have to think of and realize that the Western culture is virtually destroyed and the reason for the destruction is not following this simple advice. Because if you think about it, the advice is simple. Just to keep your gaze downwards. It will protect you from what has destroyed the West. And what is destroying the Muslim nation? Behayai. So, my dear viewers of Madhi channel, as you know, today our focus is on the male. As we mentioned, that the, in Surah Nur, first, Allah Azza wa Jal addresses the men. That means, what role do the men play? Allah Azza wa Jal says, Say to the believing men, lower your gaze and guard your modesty. And our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned a hadith. He said the zina, the zina of the eye is look. That means adultery of the eye is lustful look. And rem remember, one of the main objectives of Sharia is to protect the purity of both male and female, internally and externally. That means zahir and batin. It's for this reason we Muslims have been given this very powerful tool. And there is great wisdom in this. Lower your gaze. Today, 
we know what is happening in the modern world because they neglected this. They don't even know about it. They're not even aware of this. Therefore, you find because of this, although women are shouting for liberation, but they are completely degraded because they are used just as an object of lust, majority, object of fornication. And this has become a widespread disease, this shamelessness. The more woman stands for liberation, the more she exposes herself, the more she becomes an object of lust for the opposite sex, that means for male. In fact, this is directly the result, that means what is happening in the Western world, result of going beyond the limit which Allah Azzawajal has prescribed for us. Keeping the eyes unrestrained means uncontrolled and to look at whatever we desire pleases only our nafs. It weakens the constraint of the heart and also increases in us the evil desires. And man, because of this disease increasing, he wants to keep fulfilling his desire. It's like a vicious circle that he can't get enough. And this is what is happening. That means he continues to seek satisfaction for fulfilling his desires. But always after looking at sinful things. And this hunger, this evil is unsatiable. The more you feed this behayai, the more you feed essential desires, the more it increases. And shaitan grips you so strongly. And you're born with shaitan. Shaitan, who Allah says, Aduwum Mubin, he is your avowed enemy. But you continuously following your desires and look at be hayai, be shameless thing, increase, look at pornography, look at all this gandagi. And what happens is, you build your bond. You become closer to shaitan. Shaitan becomes more powerful with you. And this avowed enemy, ye aduwun mubin, avowed enemy of Allah and all of mankind, he grips you stronger and stronger. This is why we are advised to protect ourselves and lower our gaze. Can you see how by using our gaze we get more and more closer to shaitan? And now you realize that the first verse, the first word of this verse, as you mentioned from Surah Nur, verse 30, Allah Azawajal tells the male, keep your gaze downwards. Hadith Sayyidina Jarir ibn Abdullah anhu asked, he said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about an accidental glance at a woman. He commanded to me that you must turn your gaze away immediately. The above hadith emphasizes the significance of guarding our eyes. The accidental first glance is excused, but the second glance is dangerous, so you must look away. Because shaitan knows the first glance you don't get sin. So he doesn't want you must not have sin. So he makes you have another glance and makes you think that's also not sinful. So he knows that the second glance will lead to lustful desires. And when passion seizes one's heart, there's a great danger that this passion will increase. So the, our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised that to save ourselves from this danger and keep ourselves pure in Iman and thought, we must control our eyes. A wise person once said, that which enters the eyes also enters the heart and desire increases in the heart. That means desire for sensual pleasures, that which pleases shaitan. Now, to guard your eyes is very important. As you can see, if you start practicing and having taqwa as a child, what impact it has and how Allah Azzawajal becomes your helper against your avowed enemy shaitan. And in the verse, Allah Azzawajal says, and guard their modesty. It also can be translated as guarding your private path. Now the main reason for hijab and why it is focused on women, because women are man's weakness. This is an innate trait 
which is embedded in the nature of man. That is why women are asked to observe hijab, not just for her own protection and modesty, but also to protect man from his own weakness of his lower self of nafs. The man, therefore, must also observe his own duty and abstain from that which leads him into lustful temptation. Because in Surah 4, verse 28, Allah Azza wa Jal says that man was created weak. Concerning woman, man's mind becomes a turmoil when infatuated with woman. In Tafsir Jalalain, this verse is interpreted as, For man was created weak, unable to abstain from woman and passion. Therefore, the hijab is a protection for purity of both genders, and it is ruled according to the nature of each. Since women are made naturally soft-hearted, modest and humble, she is asked to cover up and protect herself. And since man is created weak, he is taught to, to practice self-restraint. If both genders fulfill their individual duties, the faith will be protect, protected and the purities will be preserved, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jalla. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in Surah 45, verse 15, translation from Kanzul Iman, Whoever does a good deed, so it is for his own good. And whoever commits evil, does for his own harm. And, and you will then be returned towards your Lord. So if one does righteous deeds, it is for the benefit of his own ruh. And if he does evil, then it works against his ruh and strengthens, strengthens his lower desires, his nafs. So you only have to remember one thing, that in the end, it will be brought back to Allah Azza wa Jal for accountability. And if in the dunya you have taken shaitan as your companion and shaitan uses evil female to entice you, O men, you find that the woman who is exposing herself and trying to attract your attention, she is one of the powerful tools of shaitan. Even though she may appear in the world as a beautiful person, Shaitan will make you use her beauty to trap you. If you marry, to destroy your marriage. If you're alone, for you to do evil things so that you can cut yourself off from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal and become one of those whom Allah Azza wa Jal and His beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will put wrath on you. This is what Shaitan wants. And then remember, it's mentioned for those who die kafirs on the day of Qiyamah, their faces will be black. And you find, unfortunately, these days, many Muslim men, because they now look at sensual things, and the kafir women, they dress up sensually. And our men are attracted. And these women lead them to drinking, to dancing, to do all evil things. And there's a danger that they can lose the iman as well. And this is what shaitan does. And can you imagine this person that you took as beautiful on the day of Qiyamah, it mentioned the Holy Quran, her face would be black, blacker than my hair. Now do you think she looked beautiful? And one mentioned also, the eyes will be yellow and the faces will be black. So when you see the so-called beauty that they're exposing to you, look at the reality. She's a friend of shaitan. She's attracting you. Her face is black. See her ugliness. Do not make shaitan make her look beautiful. Because she's beautiful, she will have modesty. She is beautiful, she will have a gauge downward. She is beautiful, she will fear Allah as well. If she is beautiful, she will dress up Islamically. She will have a hijab. And the fact that she hasn't, she is not beautiful. She is a tool of shaitan. Remember that. One of the major poisons of the heart is the unrestrained glance towards the opposite sex. And this results in one becoming attracted to what he sees. And what he sees 
that image become imprinted in his heart and that causes corruption. Allah Azza wa says in Surah Nur, again, we refer to this, tell the believing men to keep the gaze downwards. And also he says, tell the believing woman to keep the gaze downwards. So if you don't listen to Allah Azza wa and you look at everything, you are going to be attracted to these kind of women and you are going to destroy your own life. Let alone women, today you know even young children are watching full on the internet, unrestrained. Even the parents don't know or they don't care because they themselves are involved. Can you see what kind of life we are and future are we are heading to? So therefore you find how important it is to protect these eyes. And also in Surah Mu'minun, verse 5 and 6, it mentioned for those who guard the pri private part except for the wives and for those whom the ha right hand owns, there is no blame, blame for them. But those who seek beyond that, that means what is unlawful, they are transgressors. That means they are committing great sins. Indeed, the protection against carnal desires is fear of Allah, taqwa. Never think that if you turn your gaze and look at something, nobody is watching you. Never think that Allah Azawajal cannot observe. Allah Azawajal observes everything. He knows everything that you do. Nothing is hidden from Allah SWT. And letting your gaze run loose makes your heart blind. When the heart becomes blind, it cannot distinguish truth from falsehood. And then it will happen that falsehood will become truth to you. Darkness will become light to you. Sinful things will become enjoyable to you. And gradually you will find yourself shifting by your behavior further and further away from the sunnah of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Even you find a person once involved in ibadat, as soon as due to his eyes, he starts getting attracted to the sinful things. You'll find he'll be getting further and further away from salah. And even if you read in salah, you'll find his mind is filled with this filth while standing in salah. And he's getting further and further away. Suddenly the joy of salah will become, becoming even no more joy. It'll become a burden. And you find gradually they start drifting further and further away. Now can you see that the person who enriches himself with the sunnah of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he makes his soul wealthy and healthy. And the person who averts his eye and restrains it from looking at forbidden things, you find that his heart is filled with the nur of Allah Azza wa Jal. And his eyes will never falter when all other eyes will falter. A person who protects himself from unlawful gaze, Alhamdulillah in the mahul of Dawud Islami, for those who practice Madhi Namad, there is many times Amir Sunnat mentions that in Madhi Namad, did you look at any signboards today? And you know these days, people to advertise the product you see how shaitan is ruling so many people to advertise whatever product, whether it is juices or motor car or furniture or fridge, they must have a woman who is dressed up so immodestly because they know the first thing that will attract the eye is that immodest image, the shameless image of this woman. And she will be exposing her body and then first the person get attracted to this guna, this shameful filth and then he started noticing the product. So can you see how shaitan makes people use filth to advertise the product because they know this is man's nature that you want to sell your product you put shameless pictures and unfortunately can you see how the world is going in which direction. Our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa has mentioned a person who protects his gaze will get the reward by him who created the means of the gaze. That means Allah Azawajal has given us his eyes. And Allah Azawajal has given us the means to see. So this gift that Allah Azawajal has given us, we should use it to please him and not to please shaitan. And also our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned, and it is reported by Hazrat Abdullah bin Mas'ud, that a person who guards his gaze, 
That means he protects his gaze from tempting women and bears the difficulties of not looking at them. Then through the mercy of Allah, he will taste sweetness of Iman in his heart. My dear viewers of Madhi channel, Alhamdulillah, as you know, Amir al sunnat has given us, Alhamdulillah in Dawud Islami, many tools to guard our eyes. One is glasses called glasses of Kufle Medina. It's glasses where the top is shaded. So that when you put it on, at least for 12 minutes, you put the glasses on for those who practice Madhi in Amad, and you have the practice of making your gaze go downwards. In Dawud Islami, we are told over and over again, if you watch Madhi channel, over and over again, this nasiyat is given, this advice is given, keep your gaze downwards. So viewers of Madhi channel, this is something that we should really appreciate that Allah Azawajal has given us this movement. Alhamdulillah, in one of the risalas published by Maktabatul Madina of Dawud Islami, a very beautiful story uh, during the time of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. It mentioned in this story that there was a drought and the people of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam came to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and said, please make dua for rain. So Hazrat Musa alayhi salam told them, let us all go towards the mountain. So they all walked towards the mountain. When they reached the mountain, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam said, which of you has no sins? Accompany me, we will climb the mountain. So everyone stepped back, except one person who had one eye. And he started following Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. So Hazrat Musa alayhi salam turned around and asked him, do you have no sins? He said to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, very shyly, he said, one day, I peeped through the hole of a door into somebody's home. And then I realized that this was wrong. So I took a sharp object and I destroyed that one eye. Therefore, I only have one eye. If Allah Azawajal has forgiven me. Because of this sin that I did. I leave it to you. Hazrat Musa salam smiled at him and said, accompany me. Alhamdulillah, him and Hazrat Musa salam climbed the mountain and they made dua. As soon as they made dua, immediately it began to rain. So what madni flowers we get from this story? One is you can see that this person peeped through the hole and he realized it's a sin. And he realized the punishment for this is going to be so much greater that he destroyed his eyes. And another Madhi flower is that if you want your dua to be accepted, you have to make toba sincerely. Because sin is one of the obstacles that prevents your dua from being accepted. So, my dear viewers of Madhi channel, as you can see, the topic is on Haya modesty. And we will continue with this because there are many more Madhi flowers regarding this. In the next episode, we will continue. And the appeal is that you must practice keeping your gaze downwards. And the only way it can become easy is if we join the mahol of those who are practicing this. And no way would you get anyone or any group of people that are more practicing on this than Dawud Islami. And no way you'll get people telling you over and over again about nigah ko bachao. Then you find Amir al Sunnah, Dhamad Bhattatun Aya, Igran Shura, and many Muballigs. Whenever they give bayan, many times they will tell you, keep your gaze downwards. You go for tarbiyat training, you go for tarbiyat causes. It is drummed into you over and over again. Keep your gaze downward. Protect yourself. Protect your eyes from sinning. And can you see from what we have heard the benefit of protecting yourself 
and protecting your gaze. May Allah Azawajal give us tawfiq to keep our contact and get involved in the mahul of Dawud Islami. Ameen bijahi nabil ameen. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Say